Now let me jump off to our message and give you a background of the prophecy again made by Isaiah. This was years before. Jesus came, and Isaiah made a prophecy, and he said, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. The background was the Assyrians were about to come and invade the Israelites. So Isaiah made this prophecy, it's going to be messy, it's going to be dark, a lot of people would die, maraming mamamatay dito, but please do not lose hope because for for I'm going to give someone a gift to everyone, and it would be a child. Okay? It would be a son that would be given to you, and his name is called Jesus. And then he gives and he unboxes who this Jesus is, and he's called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Now, nobody believed the prophecy. They thought it was like good news, bayan. May gera, tapos papadala mo bata. Diba? Isipin mo, no, pag magulo, tapos ito yung papadala mo. Diba? Baby, anak ko yan, no? wala lang, gusto ko lang lagay. Okay, so, para makita nyo. Okay, so, uh, why put your hope on a baby? What we need is someone who is articulate, someone who is experienced, someone who has the political will to help us and rescue us. But Jesus, said, God said, no, no, my gift is a child. A son would be given to you. And so nobody believed him. When Jesus came here on earth, and dami ring din naniwala sa kanya. Let's fast forward 2015. Imagine mo ngayon, no, with the Bible being preached, with the Christian message out there, the gospel message out there, madami pa rin din naniniwala, and they're rejecting the gift, which is Jesus. And so what we want to try to do today is really look at how precious this gift is and how this gift can transform our lives, how this gift can give us hope, how this gift can give us a future. And so let's unbox it today, and we're going to the second nature of God. Last week, we talked about wonderful counselor. Ano big ng wonderful counselor? Wonderful counselor means a planner. He's a God who plans great and wonderful things for us beyond our comprehension. Marami sa, maraming nangyari sa buhay natin, di natin maintindihan, pero alam mo, God is weaving a story. I also cannot explain some of the things that happens in life. But what I know is that God is a wonderful counselor. He's doing something. He's creating a story. Hindi po tayo pwedeng nakatingin na parang ganito kung may ginagawa siyang at nakikita niya yung buong picture ng buhay natin. He is a wonderful counselor. Now, can I explain everything that happens to me? I cannot. Can I explain what happens to some of our church members? I cannot. I'm also a man. But there is a God who is wonderful. Grabe yung plano niya, hindi mo maintindihan bakit iba yung thoughts niya sa thoughts natin, iba yung plano niya sa plano natin. And so he's a wonderful counselor. He makes great plans for us. So that's week one. Today we look at the word mighty God. Ano ibig sabihin ng mighty God? So dalawa lang yung point ko ngayon, mighty and God. Ano ibig sabihin ng mighty? Na mighty means, when you say mighty, it means powerful. And by implication, ibig sabihin niyan, yung context kung saan sinulat yung word na mighty sa Hebrew word, ang context yan, warfare, may gera. He is a mighty warrior. So when, when Isaiah prophesied, the Assyrians are coming, but there is a mighty God. What Isaiah was saying is, there's going to be a warrior who would rescue you, who would fight for you. He is powerful. He is mighty. Mightier than any nation. And so what Isaiah was saying is, Okay lang, may darating at magaling to. Hindi lang to magaling, the best to. He is mighty God. He is a champion. He's strong. He's valiant. Right? And He would fight the battles for you. So every time we sing, you're mighty God. What you're actually declaring is somebody is going to fight my battles. It's not going to be moi or me. Okay? Because if I fight my battles, lagi akong umiiyak. Duguan akong umiiyak. Kinamot ako ng kapitbahay. Okay. And, but if it is the Lord who fights your battle, you know He is number one, He's mighty. Malakas eh. He's all-powerful. He never loses. He always wins. Right? And every time you think He's losing, there's something He's doing again. It's part of His strate stra strategic mind that He's weaving out something because He's also wonderful counselor. So, what, what the Bible was saying is this Jesus, the gift, is not only wonderful counselor, He's someone who will fight the battles for you. 
In the Old Testament, in Exodus 14, 14, it says, The Lord will fight for you. You need only be what? Still. Ano raw requirements sa isang Kristiyano? If we understand that God is mighty, you only need to be still. Grabe to, mahirap to. Sino sa inyo hirap dito? Na, Lord, ikaw nang lumaban para sa akin. Ang sarap pakinggan, di ba? Si Lord will fight the battles for us. But what's the greatest temptation? It's not that the Lord will fight the battle for us, it's that we be still. Jesus is saying, I will fight for you. Hindi, Lord, alam ko solution dito eh. Kaya ko. Sige na, back up ka lang, Lord. And we cannot be still. And for the Israelites, ang dami nilang diskarte. Kaya nga si Moses, ang tagal, di ba? 40 years. What should have been around how many months? Extended to 40 years. Bakit? Ang hilig dumiskarte, ang hilig lumaban on their own, what happens? They're disobeying the mighty God. Because if you say God is mighty, Lord, you are mighty. What you're saying is, God, I'm willing to surrender to you and you be the one to fight my battles and I'll be still. Maraming sitwasyon sa buhay natin out of our hands. Tama ba? Yeah? Kahit na gusto natin in control tayo, we can never be in control. Kaya nga yung mga control freak, ano nangyari sa kanila? Nasisiraan ng bayot. Yeah? Bakit? Control freak eh. Lahat nakaschedule. Diba? Eh sa traffic ngayon, wala ka na maschedule. Di ba? Sa nangyari sa buhay, hindi mo na ma-schedule. Really. Maybe around 80-90% of what we have, it's out of our hands. Yeah? Kaya nga sabi sa Bible, time and chance happen to us all. You'll never know when it will happen. Sometimes things gets, get out of hand positively, sometimes negatively. Right? And so it is the Lord declaring, I am mighty. I will fight your battles. You only need to be still. Years ago, I was a youth, the youth pastor sa Fort. At nag-start kami ng youth service sa Market Market. Ang target namin, mga public schools sa Taguig. First time ako nakakita in my whole pastoral life. No? Habang nagpe-praise and worship, ang dami nagmumurahan. Tapos may nagsusuntukan. Sabi namin, grabe, ito ang church. Yeah? Pumupunta mga hindi Christian. Yeah? And, and you would hear, habang may nag may nagmumura din sa likod. Yeah? A lot of people were getting saved. Frat members, mga magugulong mga estudyante, they were going to our service. Started out with around 60 people, it went up to 300. Napuna, napuno namin yung Market Market Theater. Sobrang rowdy nung crowd. Feel na feel mo yung rowdiness. Pero may isang afternoon, may lumapit sa pastor, may problema. Sa anong problema? Sa labas ho, may mga frat guys na medyo malalaki. At meron tayong member na dating frat member doon. Mukhang gusto nilang may gusto silang gawin. So, so ako naman, siyempre, katakot yun, di ba? Pero siyempre, hindi ko papakita yun. Bakit? Kapal kilay ko eh. Hindi, <laughs> hindi, hindi. Pastor ako eh. So, sige, 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 akong bahala. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to them. Sa loob ko, Lord, is this the day that I die? Okay, so, medyo nakakatakot yung senaryo, di ba? Buti na lang, hindi lang ako ang youth pastor. Buti na lang, may dalawa pang youth pastor akong kasama. Dito sa kanan ko, si Miko Tangko, na laking tondo. Mahilig mong martial arts at medyo bayolente yung past. Si Robert Gonzalez, uh, youth pastor natin ngayon sa Makati, 6'4 na basketball player ng NBA pa noon. Okay. So sabi ko sa kanilang dalawa, may kakausapin ako, sumama kayo. <laughs> Doon kayo sa likod. So labas kami. Paglabas namin, nakita namin yung mga frat guys. Nakaganon. Siga, siga. Alam mo, say ko, say ko, dikit lang kayo. Ha? So, nagkatitigan. Siyempre, nagkatitigan. Paglabas, di ba? Parang, kaganon lang. Yeah. Confident ako. Bakit? Laki nung nasa likod ko. Eh. Di ba? Kung ako lang, siyempre, tao lang din. No? Siyempre, takot ako, no? Pero nung alam ko na dyan si Miko at si staring match pa lang, tapos na sila, eh. Yeah? They saw that we were bigger. They were bigger, okay? <laughs> and so they, they, they left, okay? Without even talking to us. And, and since that time, they never came back to our youth service, okay? What happened? I knew I had dressed back. I knew I had the twin towers of campus ministry okay, backing me up when there's a problem. 
Ken lakas ng loob ko. Why? I know somebody will fight for me. Literally. Kasi pagtatakbo na yan, tatakbo na ako pag pray. Bro, kayo na yan. Okay, diba? I, I knew what to do. I had my plans. Okay? Sa Chinese, tawag dyan, Akinachi. Alam nyo na yan, ha? Aki, Akinachi niya, lasko. Tatakbo na ako. Nasa, yan, Akinachi. Okay. Okay. So, that was the game plan. Let them fight. Akinachi lang ako. So, and, and again, it, it was something that secured me because there were two bigger guys with me. Pero alam naman natin, pag may seven-footer dyan, itong dalawa tatakbo din to. Right? Because they're bigger than us. But with God, God tells us, no, no, I will fight the battle. I am mighty. All other demonic forces and even human authorities are no match compared to me because I am mighty. I am all powerful. I am all mighty God. The question I want to ask is this, who fights for you? Sa gera nyo nung 2015 sa buhay nyo, whether it's marriage, whether it's business, whether it's your faith, whether it's a fight against sin, who's fighting for you? Have you let God fight your battles? Or are you fighting it alone? Hindi, kaya ko to. Discarte ko to. Is God fighting your battles? Because God declares, Jesus is mighty God. So you go to Jesus, Jesus fights your battle. Who fights for you? In Psalms 46.10, it says, Be still and know that I am God. I love this picture because it tells us just to sit down and let Jesus fight our battles. Be still. Kasi tayo, pag pumapapel, kumakapal yung papel. Ibig sabihin, hindi na kailangan ganun ka tagal pa. So, murender ka na lang sa mighty God. Isya nang lalaban for you. When we say be still, that doesn't mean be passive. What that means is total dependence on God. What that means is, Lord, this is out of my hands. Kahit anong sigaw ko, kahit anong connection ko, this will not work. I need you. It's running to God and surrendering to God. Even in the midst where I cannot explain, I just know that I have to be still and know that He is what? He is God. So the question is, uh, the application for us is this. Fight your battles with Jesus. Don't fight alone. Okay? Fight your battles with Jesus, the mighty God. Okay? Huwag kayong magsalo. Okay? Mga wala pang victory group dito, one of the reasons would be your nature is because you think you can do it alone. Okay? You cannot. You cannot. Kung wala kang connection dito sa church, relational connections dito sa church, you cannot fight alone. Mahirapan ka talaga isolated ka, mag-isa ka, feeling mo, manood ka lang ng super book, lalakas ka na. It's not enough. Right? Fight with Jesus. Okay? With the other men and women that are around you. Fight in community. Yeah? Itong community, may Jesus to eh. Yeah? So, ang lakas lang if you know you're fighting in community. Fight your battles with Jesus, the mighty God. Di ba sabi Psalms 46.10? Be still and know that I am what? God. That's the second word. God. Now, when you say God today, sobra siyang abuse, sobra siyang misuse, wala nang ibig sabihin ang God. Tama ba? Pag lumabas ako ngayon dito at pumunta ako sa ibang templo at sabihin ko, let's all pray to God. Lahat yan tatayo at magpe-pray. Ang tanong, sinong God? Wala nang meaning ang God ngayon. Right? You go to other nations, there are millions of gods. Yung halaman, God. Yung paso na naghahawak sa halaman, God. Yung soil, God. Yung seed, God. Yung prutas, God. Yung hangin, God. Yung araw, God. Lahat, God. So when you say God today, it's not as offensive, am I right? Oh, kailangan mo si God. God. Yeah. Huwag mong kalimutan si God. Ang tanong naman, sinong God? Kasi maraming God sa mundo. But Isaiah made an exclusive declaration. And his name will be called Mighty God. That separates Jesus from all the other gods of this world. Bakit? Mighty God. Isa lang ang powerful God. 
Isa lang ang Diyos na, na makapagliligtas, who is mighty to save. All the other gods cannot save. That's why it's only in the uh, Bible of the Christians where you would see that the only way to get saved is through faith in Christ alone. All the other religions will tell you, worship this God and plus you do this. Why? They're not mighty to save. Now, but when you say that, it's very offensive. Am I right? Pag sabi mo, si Jesus lang ang God, a lot of people would get mad. But that's the truth. In fact, Genesis chapter 1 pa lang, the fourth word in the scripture defined everything for us. It says in Genesis 1.1, in the beginning, what? God. Malalim to, ah. In the beginning, God. May mga kaibigan na ba kayo lumapit sa inyo? I have a question for you, a philosophical one. Ano yan? Who created God? Huh? Who created God? No? Sabihin ko sa inyo, if somebody created God, that God is God. And the question never ends. Who created the God? Who created the God? The God who created the God, the God who created the God. But Jesus declared in the first sentence in the scripture, in the beginning, God. Nobody created me. I was there. I'm the beginning. I'm God. I defined everything. I started everything. You question the first four words of scripture, then your faith is useless. Because God defined everything. God started everything. God created everything. In the beginning, it was God. Now, next question. Eh, si Jesus ba God? Sabi kasi dun sa TV, si Jesus hindi God eh. Si Jesus, good teacher. Si Jesus, good prophet. Sa ibang kulto, si Jesus, kapatid si Satan. Right? And millions believe this. Right? Is Jesus God? Now, in Colossians chapter 2, verse 9, it says, For in Christ, all the fullness of the deity, all the fullness of God, lives in bodily form. And in Christ, we have been brought to the fullness. He's the head over every power and authority. Ano sabi ni Paul sa Colossians? Si Jesus daw is God, the fullness of God in bodily form. All authority, all power bows down to Jesus because Jesus is God. Now, you say this outside, people will get mad. No, no, He's just one of the gods. All the gods are the same, di ba? They worship this, they worship that, they worship... Tayo mga born again, Jesus tayo, pero lahat yan papuntang langit. No. Jesus made an exclusive claim. Hindi ba kayo nagtataka bakit siya pinako sa cross? Kasi feeling ng mundo ang yabang niya. He made an exclusive claim that He was the only way to salvation. John 14.6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Mayabang na statement yan, ha? Parang, I'm from the Ateneo. I'm the Lasal. <laughs> okay, parang ganun, di ba? Parang, Jesus made an exclusive claim. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is saying, you want to be saved? You need to have faith in me. Because I am God. I'm not just any God. I'm mighty God. I'm God in human flesh. world will tell you all supreme being is God. Hare Krishna is God. Buddha is God. In India, all these are gods. The statues are God. The sun is God. But Jesus said, no, they're not God. I am God. You can call them God all you want, but it doesn't change the fact that I am mighty God. And all people will come through me. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. The gospel is so offensive. When Jesus came here on earth, it was so offensive. That's why the Pharisees couldn't take it. Ah, blasphemy for them. For you to even say that. In Hebrews 
1 verse 3. It says, The Son, Jesus, is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of His what? Being. Sustaining all things by His powerful word, after He had provided purification for sins, He sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. Ano sabi sa Hebrews? Mismo tong Jesus, who is the supreme being, purifies us of sin. Only God can purify us of sin. And now Jesus declared, I can forgive you of your sin. Di ba nagalit yung mga Pharisee? Who does he think he is who can forgive the sins of men? Because Jesus made that declaration, I am God. I am mighty, I'm powerful, I'll fight your battles, but I am God. I can forgive sin. When people run to me and ask for forgiveness, I can release forgiveness. And I could forgive their sinful nature. And no other God can even make that claim, but only Jesus. Jesus said, I can forgive you of your sin. Saying this alienates people who think there is another way to heaven. When you say Jesus, it's different. Okay, John 5, 18. This was why the Jews were seeking all the more to kill him because not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he was even calling God his own father, making himself equal with God. They could not take it. They wouldn't believe the prophecy that for unto us a child is born and his name would be mighty God that this Jesus is mighty to save, and that He is God. Eh, anak ng karpintero yan eh. Sa Nazareth yan, nothing good comes out of Nazareth. Why would we worship Him? Why would you believe Him? Lahat na ng signs and wonders, pinakita na, di ba? Parang, hindi, hindi totoo yan. Demonic yun. And they rejected the gift. And we see this today. Our culture rejects Jesus. Oh, it's just for the Christians, but for us, respect us. We don't want Jesus. Say ko nga pag God mabilis. Sabi mo sa labas, be close to God. Opo, opo. Pray ka lang kay God. Okay. Mahal ka ni God. Okay. Palitan mo. Pray ka kay Jesus. Baka Jesus mo yan. Iba yung God ko. Changes, right? Yeah. Yung mga medyo strict sa kanilang religious faith. Yeah. Yeah. Pray lang ako kay Jesus. Ha? Huh? Wag. Pray ka kay God. Pag new age ka usap mo, pray to Jesus. Yeah. Pray to Jesus the energy. But they would never say, Jesus is God Almighty. Mapit ka sa pinaka-open-minded na tao at sabihin mo, si Jesus lang ang way to heaven. Magagalit sa'yo yan. Magiging close-minded yan. Pero sabihin mo, si God, way to heaven. That's right. But Jesus, just one difference. Because God is friendly for the world, but you name Jesus. But Scripture would tell us it's all about Jesus. So He changes the ball game. Jesus is God. He's King. He's Lord. He's Master. He's the name that is above all names. Nalalan yun nung bata pa kayo, maparty kayo, labas kayo, uwi kayo yung lasing, okay lang, sabi ng nanay mo, tatay mo, okay lang, basta umuwi ka ha. Pero nung muwi ka na ng 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, saan ka galing? Sa church, ano sabi mo? Uy, Jesus, Jesus ka na, di ba? There's something about that name. Really. There's something about that name. People are afraid of that name. Because you know there's something distinct about the name Jesus because Jesus is mighty God. Jesus offended cultures. Jesus offended beliefs strong held beliefs because he made the claim that I am God. Isaiah 7, balik natin sa prophecy. 
The virgin will conceive and bear a son, and he shall be called Emmanuel. What? God with us. This Jesus means God with us. The presence of ve the very God himself is with us. Jesus is God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Diba sabi ko kanina, Genesis 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, in the New Testament, it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. May kasama raw si God in the beginning. Sino kasama niya? Verse 14, John 1, 14, and the Word became what? Flesh and dwelt among us, and we saw His glory. Glory is the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. In short, in the beginning, creation pa lang, Genesis 1 pa lang, andun na si Jesus. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Verse 14, and the Word became flesh. Kaya no, sinabi ni God, let us make man in our own image. Hindi po siya skitso noon, may kausap siya. Kausap niya yung Trinity. Why? Jesus was there. And that's why the prophecies were made. Di ba yung mga series natin before? I will put an enmity between you and the man. Alam na ni God eh, bakit? Kasama niya si Jesus eh. Pero timing lang, kung kailan lalabas si Jesus. This rescuer will come, and His name is Wonderful Counselor, He's Mighty God, and He was revealed in the New Testament. And when He was revealed in the New Testament, nobody believed Him. Everybody wants Him crucified. But good, there were a hundreds, a few thousands who believe in this Jesus. And the gospel was spread throughout the earth. But up until now, we reject. As a culture, we reject that Jesus is God. We've taken Jesus out. We're passing laws in the land that takes Jesus out. Kaya sanay na si Jesus yan. Kung may king of rejection, si Jesus yan. He's been rejected so many times, but it doesn't change the fact that He is mighty God. I don't know if you've heard when one of our missionaries from Pakistan shared to us, this was months ago, he was sharing, pag nasa ibang bansa ka na restricted, okay lang magsabi ng God. So pag sinabi mo sa ibang bansa, you worship God, lahat sila, yes! Yes. Kahit sa mga atheist nation, you worship God. Oh, yeah. That's Mao Zedong. It's different definitions. He was preaching about God. E sabi niya, maliit yung kwarto, may speaker sa labas. So, rinig sa streets. Habang nagpipreach siya, sabi ng Holy Spirit sa kanya, mention the name Jesus. Parang siya sa loob-loob niya, mamamatay ako nito eh. Yeah. Eh, hindi tinantara ng Holy Spirit siguro. Feeling ko, inano siya, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Parang, hindi na siya makapreach, eh, no? So, nag-obey na lang after a few minutes. Sabi niya, bahala na. Kahit rinig to sa labas. He mentioned, and only Jesus can save you. For the first time, he mentioned Jesus in that restricted land. After a few minutes, he heard shouting in the room. There was a commotion. Sabi niya, what's happening? One of the women who attended the service, who was not a Christian, I think she was deaf, could now hear. And then signs and wonders started to happen. And he started praying for healing to happen in that room. And people got saved. Ngayon, sobrang laki nung church natin doon. 65. Locals. Pag sinabi mong 65, mga 6,000 plus yan dito sa Manila. Yun yung parang comparison mo. You're so bold. But then, one of those defining moments in his ministry was when he boldly declared, only Jesus can say. There's power in the name of Jesus. Sabi sa Colossians 1.16, For by Him, lahat ng Him, papalitan ko, gawin natin Jesus. For by Jesus, all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through Jesus and for Jesus. Lahat daw na mangyari sa mundo, dadaan kay Jesus yan. It's through Him and for Him. Pag dumaan kay Jesus yan, approve yan for what? 
for His glory. Whether good or bad, it would go through Him and for Him. Kaya makita mo sa Bible, pati yung kichub, makit pa si Satan sa langit, nagpaalam, pwede ko bang bigyan ng chicken pox yung alaga mo? Di ba? It goes through Him and for what reason? It's for Him. It's all about Jesus. For by Jesus, all things were created. Nung na-promote ka, yung platform mo, it is through Jesus and for Jesus. Yung may sumagot sa yung girl, it is through Jesus and for Jesus. Yung career advance, advancement mo, it is through Jesus and for Jesus. The same way, some of the worst things that might have happened in your life, death of a loved one, through Jesus and for Jesus. Loss of a business, through Jesus and for Jesus. Can we explain? We cannot. He's a wonderful counselor, but yet He's mighty to save. He can turn things around for you. For by Him, all things were created. Through Him and for Him. Everything goes through Jesus. That's why when we point you to Jesus, that is the central message of Scripture. It goes back to Jesus. It's not about us. That's why Christmas is through Jesus and for Jesus. It's not for you. It's through Jesus and for Jesus. But it doesn't end there. Verse 70. He existed before all things. And He holds all creation together. Ano ibig sabihin niyan? He holds all things together. Okay. Kaya pag may nagtanong sa'yo, how are you holding up? <laughs> Corny. Okay. <laughs> it's Jesus who's holding me up. Kung bakit ganito ba yung marriage namin? It's Jesus who glues things together. Sobrang grabe yung pinagdaanan yung pamilya. Grabing trial. Grabing paghihirap. Why are you still holding up? Because somebody's holding you. Sino? It's Jesus. Imagine if it's the world. You think the world can hold you up? With the advancement of everything in this world, it cannot hold all things together. If you want me to be scientific, planet Earth, move it a little farther to the sun, we freeze. Frozen tayo lahat. You move it a further, little degree to the sun, nearer to the sun, we all burn. Who's holding all these things together? And we're just talking about little teeny planet Earth, I'm not even talking about the galaxies of the universe. Who would even think about that? Somebody's holding all things together. And who is that? The Bible says it's Jesus, the mighty God, all-powerful, almighty, the one who fights for you, the one who holds all things together for you. Why? It's through Him and for Him. I want to end with this. In Philippians 2, 9 to 11. Therefore, God has exalted Jesus and bestowed on Jesus the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Imagine one day, the Bible says, that all creation, all Christians, atheists, agnostics, those who worship sun gods, those who worship money, those who worship the things of this earth, will bow down. Christians would bow down happily before the Lord, while all other creation would be forced to bow down to this king, to this mighty God whose name is above every name. All the demonic forces of the world would one day bow down to this name because He is mighty God. Whether you vote for Him or not, it doesn't matter. It doesn't change the fact. He is God. And His name is above every name. Kaya huwag niyong mamalitin pag nagpe-pray kayo. In Jesus' name, Amen. There's so much power in that prayer. When we call upon the name of Jesus, the Bible says, you will be saved. Why? He is mighty to save. 
He is mighty God. Now, how do we apply this? Two things. Number one is to repent of all idolatry and unbelief. When you say Jesus is mighty but live as if He's not, that's called idolatry. Ibig sabihin, ikaw pa rin ang lumalaban ng sarili mong battles. You're fighting your battles without Jesus. So, declaring Him as mighty is actually, wala lang. That's lip service. He's not really mighty in your life. If, if you're the one still running your own life and not the mighty God, then that's idolatry. You've got to let Jesus run your life. Repent of all idolatry and unbelief. When we say Jesus fights the battle for you, there's two sides to that. Yung isa, yan yung mga taong na mamoblema ngayon, sobrang comforting. Wow, Jesus fights my battles. But the other side is the group of people who always tries to fight their own battles because of pride. And God is asking you to repent and say, let Jesus fight your battles, not you. You're not as good as you think you are. You need Jesus. Second, is to surrender to the Almighty God. To say, Jesus, I surrender to you. You are mighty. And you are my God. And I come to you. If you're here today and you've not surrendered your life to God, to this Jesus, okay? Now, you might surrender your life to God. Sinurrender ko na boy ko sa kay God. Again, sino yun? But if you've never surrendered your life to Jesus who is the mighty God, today's your day of salvation. You might be going to church for three years, four years, and still you didn't get it, and now you're, you're getting it because the Holy Spirit is revealing this to you. Iba yung minsan, God-God natin kung sino talaga si Jesus. Tanong mo, 70% of Filipinas would say, oh, oh, Ang buhay ko nasa Diyos. Sino yan? Sinong Diyos yan? But only you know if you've surrendered your life to, to Jesus. So I'm, I'm asking you this morning to surrender your life to Jesus who is mighty God.